Hello, <clears throat> Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is Thursday, April 2nd of 2020. And I am still using Linux, and I am still using my 4K monitor, and just one, I'm just using one monitor. <clears throat> but I've got it in the, what, 2550 or whatever it is, by 1440 or something. I think that's correct. I'm uh, using um, OBS to record this video and using the Logitech uh, Brio camera and using this headset and for the last few days or whatever things have been working out pretty you know pretty good. Um, You know, a lot of reporters and TV personalities and people are doing video from home because of the virus. And uh, it's kind of interesting. Some of them, it's pretty crappy. And, I mean, they're professionals and they have resources. They're not having a crew, of course, come out and, you know, do their makeup and uh, whatever. But, I mean, they have all type of resources, but... Some of them have some uh, pretty uh, pretty crappy video, and they have <clears throat> they've even talked about difficulties that they've had. Or so, it should make them sort of appreciative of people who do YouTube videos, because I think probably they thought, you know, uh, I worked for a while um, security. Uh, it was a second job. Uh, I was working full time hospital security, but I worked at uh, a radio TV uh, station security for them and there was uh, uh, like you know for the six o'clock news or whatever there was like uh, from sometimes I can't remember how it was a year it was a long time ago but there would be the you know the guy in the suit sitting there suit tie the whole bit and just have boxer shorts on because he wasn't um, he was sitting down and for some reason I think wanted to save their pants so they didn't get a crease or something in it because I think they had to do you know something else uh, so I also worked security there uh, it turned out during an election and so I got to see the governor of the state and some other people like that show up governor of the state of Kansas was I forget whether what whether he was a Democrat or a Republican, but he was really nice, and he showed up with a uh, I think a highway patrol officer drove the car or whatever, and that was his security, you know. And uh, there was a guy who was a Republican who was running for something, and he showed up in a limo. I've mentioned this before. He showed up in a limo, and he was an asshole. And the people with him were fucking ass-kissing assholes. And they were drinking, you know, cocktails or whatever in the limo. And uh, I thought, you know, when he, I, I let them in, you know. And uh, then I was outside and I thought, man, I hope that guy, I hope he, hope he doesn't get, hope he doesn't win, you know. And... Uh, then I had to make rounds inside occasionally, so I went. He was there for hours and hours and hours because he was make. They were recording his advertisement, you know, advertising there, uh, his campaign ads. So I would go in, and of course they have monitors. Well, it was now you wouldn't be surprised, but of course they had monitors up, like an entire wall filled with monitors. So the video he was making was showing, you know, on there. And the, because they weren't broadcasting that over the air, you know, the cables were going directly into the back of the, the, uh, now we, you know, we have good, you know, I have good, you know, with my monitor. But uh, back then, and that was really, you know, everything was sharp and, you know, everything. And I, then I saw, they brought, I had a stool and he put his foot up on the stool and, 
and of course they were cutting it and making overdoing over doing it over and over again. I made my rounds and I came back in later the same stuff going on. I came back later the same stuff going on. And then I was thinking, shit, he looks you know, that looks good. Ugh. Uh anyway in the election he lost major. It was a disaster. So I think that his riding around in that limo and uh thinking that he was somebody special and somebody important or whatever, I think the voters uh, sent a little message and taught him a lesson. And I hope that that happens in, you know, well, of course, that was a lot of elections. I, I'd like to see that happen again. I'd like to see the voters just send a message. Just Since I'm a Democrat or whatever, I would like to see, and I think the Republicans have, whatever, of course, you know, half of you would disagree with me, but whatever. I'd just like to see uh, everybody just vote all the Republicans out, even if it's your brother-in-law, you know. Just if there's an, you know, if they're up for election, not everybody's up for election at the same time. Just, just uh, vote all the Republicans out. Just, and then when the next election comes around, don't vote for any Republicans. And if there's any still left, vote them out. And then just, you know, and of course you would, you'd let them know, you know, okay. You guys were bad. You guys, you know, didn't, you know, you guys were serving a another, uh, you know, person, and it wasn't God, you know. You were serving the greed of uh, whatever, and so we fucked you. And then, you know, the Democrats would be, <laughs> oh, uh, you know, everything, and then, even it'd be hard though, but even if the Democrats had just screw them too, if both vote all them out. I mean, you know, vote them out. Next election come around, vote them out, and then the Democrats will be like, Well, this next time at least the the you know, the voters are probably gonna, you know, vote them out a third you know, just just send a message. You know, we are the career killers. You know, we <laughs> But that's not going to happen. Uh, so, uh, we've been doing fine with the virus. I'm, we're not getting out. I'm not getting out. My ex-wife, who's confined to a wheelchair, very rarely gets out. We don't have a car with a lift or anything, and there's the only place that she can really get out, the only place she needs to go is to, well, she used to go to Walmart once or twice a month by the van, the city or the county, it's tied in with the transportation service, and I don't know who, you know. And um, it's not free. She actually pays more than she would pay if she were to ride the bus. She can't ride the bus, but if she could, you know, because the van that comes in, the van doesn't just come and pick, you know, her up. It picks up several people, and then... Uh, and you can't just call up and say, uh, in an hour, could you come and pick me up? You have to call a day ahead of time and make, you know. And then they just take you within the county. And uh, then you have to tell them, you know, you, when, if you go to Walmart, you know, you have, pick me up. I'm going to be going to this Walmart at such and such a time. And they pick you up and then they take you there. But then before, the day before, you have to tell them when you'll be done and you want to be picked up at Walmart. You just can't pick up the phone at Walmart and or your cell phone. And she doesn't have a cell phone, but you can't just say, "Okay, come and pick me up." Kind of a problem for like doctors' offices. You know, sometimes you go to the doctor's office and you get there. You know, you have to get there 15 or 30 minutes ahead of time, and then you sit in the waiting room for X amount of time, and then they say, "Okay," and they take you back and put you in the little room. And you sit there sometimes for a long, you know, a long time. Um, so, um, anyway, so we've been ordering food. In fact, we have an, an order we're going to order tonight that will come tomorrow. My ex-wife is sort of freaking out uh, about, you know, I, I keep telling her, you know, the, 
supplies that you know we're ava- they have toilet paper and you know toilet paper and food and all that type of truckers are bringing that you know hauling that shit down the uh, down the roads they're working you know it's more difficult for them and they're working longer hours and traveling more miles and they're bringing the stuff in and the prop you know and the the stockers in the stores are, you know, they're doing their best stocking up, but the people are just coming in, you know, like Night of the Living Dead zombies or something and grabbing everything and whatever. But So we've been getting, uh, uh, you know, getting food and everything okay, no problem ordering stuff in. We've we have ordered from Amazon, had it delivered a time or two, but my ex-wife uh, does the food ordering, and uh, uh, is ordering primarily from Amazon. They've delivered fine. We're in a gated community, you know. They, I give them in the uh, thing the gate code and what have you, and they've been bringing this stuff in. No, you know, no problem. But like I said, my ex-wife is just kind of freaking out because, you know, some stuff's not available and they make substitutions. I have a link, by the way, for Walmart. If you're not signed up, if you've never used them, you use that link, you'll get, I forget, is it, I think maybe $10 off if it's the first time and you have to order. <clears throat> for that, you have to order $50 worth and you'll get <clears throat> $10 off. Uh, so there's a link below for that. If you use it, you get, I think it's $10, can't remember. I think it says, and then I'll get $10 if you, you know, if you do that, that I can use to take off of uh, an order that we place. So it's been working out really well, you know, really well for us. I don't know if you can see in the camera. Let me pull that back. <laughs> I don't want to look like a hoarder, and I'm not, we're not really doing that, by the way. Although my, uh, let's see, what I want to pull, I want to pull this up, don't I? Yeah. See if you can see. Yeah, see if I can go down a little bit. Okay, that's just uh, part of the stack of Coca-Cola over there. And there's some more next to my little refrigerator. I have a little refrigerator. Uh, oh, I have, we... For the first time, uh, I've been ordering in, or I've been t- telling her to, I've been ordering, because you your limit two right now. It's, you know, a little Caesar salads and some other kind of salads. And I've, so I've been, I've been doing better. Uh, I haven't been eating any, I'm drinking Coke Zero that doesn't have sugar. And uh, uh, been eating better. I've been going out and walking the parking lot. And I've made a video of that. And walking around once. <laughs> but that's good for me. I mean, that's not, well, I'm doing better, you know. So twice a day I make that circuit. Uh, long, Not a long circuit. Uh, so that's been working okay. Toilet paper, uh, I put an order in with Amazon. I ordered some other stuff from Amazon. By the way, if you want to help me out, give me some extra money to purchase toys, which if they're good toys, I'll show them to you, computer stuff and camera stuff, all that kind of stuff. There is also a link below. If you use that link, or if you use jimhoward.me, which is the same link but it you know it's easier to remember if you use that link it takes you to amazon then once you're there you don't have to purchase anything that i may have put there you go there and it's the amazon site and if you purchase anything i will get a commission hopefully you will go there and purchase let's hope you're a hospital and you go there and purchase uh uh, say it's a 500 bed hospital and you purchase uh, 700 large screen TVs or something then I could retire 
oh no, I'm already retired. But if you can do that, use that anyway. Uh, uh, you know, just a while back, I think it was uh, World Health Organization. They said the World Health Organization said, you know, <clears throat> unless you have the virus, you don't need to wear the simple mask. And uh, also by not wearing these masks, like if you don't have it and you put the mask on, you know, the simple mask, and, uh, you know, so you don't have to wear it unless you have the virus and you're, to get, you're getting out or whatever. Now they're saying uh, some research, not the, well, they're not saying, but they're agree, you know, agreeing that uh, now it looks like that uh, Japan and China and uh, places like that they they've been wearing masks, especially I think Japan. If they have a cold, you know, for years or whatever, they have a cold or something like that. They've been wearing it, you know. When you we see YouTube videos or whatever, or street views or whatever, and you see the it, it used to be you'd see uh, somebody walking down the street wearing a mask, you know, and it'd be it just feel funny. Uh, Now uh, it looks like that it's a, it looks like the statistics or whatever is showing that yes, wearing the mask is helpful to prevent you know you getting it or whatever. I'm going to uh, I am I'm a liberal I'm a bleeding heart liberal I always have been I was I don't know why uh, as a teenager I was. Uh, liberal and uh, whatever so these stories it's just I'm so old I'm 79 like this uh, story I clicked on ER doctor dies in his husband's arms uh, it's like uh, uh, wait a minute you know and it's other things like little news you know you CNN news stories or whatever and they'll say you know uh, or there'll be a video, you know, uh, so-and-so, and, -so and uh, it'll be like, you know, Mary Smith and uh, her husband, uh, Betty Brown. You know, maybe my mind will go like, uh, wait a minute, uh, something's wrong here, you know? But people of my age are, uh, it's, we're going to die out before long, and then, you know, the rest of you, the younger people are already, you know, it doesn't cause, you know, like my com brain, computer brain or whatever goes, warning, warning, incorrect input, incorrect input, you know. Um, this is unreal. I mean, even for somebody my age, this is, uh, all of us are living through, it's just, I just didn't think this, you know, that, you know, this is just, just a strange uh, situation. Uh, uh, one thing, the strategic reserve, you know, that we have. Oh, my ex-wife says from time to time about me. You know, you just think you are so smart, or you just think you know everything. And uh, yeah, I do think I am smarter than her, and I do think I know more than she does. But uh, there's a lot I don't know, and there's a lot of new stuff that I'm, <laughs> a lot of new stuff. I knew we had a strategic reserve. It's been talked about forever, and it's always been talked about, I think, in regard to like oil they that's when it comes up uh we have you know we're increasing the amount of you know in our strategic reserve and then i knew that the strategic reserve or whatever that we had massive amounts of stuff in there like uh like let's say the belgian congo i know i know there's no belgian congo but i don't know who's you know i don't know what they're name is now uh, but uh, you know say the Belgian Congo mined uh, tritium 
I don't know if there's a thing called Teridium, probably is, you know. And that's the only place you could get it. So I knew that in our strategic reserve, that's one thing we would have in there in case uh, the USSR, I know there's no USSR, unless Russia, because in case Russia took over, you know, or in case they, the Belgian Congo just decided, ah, fuck the United States, we're not going to give you any of our stuff and any of our tritium, and then it would be like, uh, fuck, tr tritiums and everything we need, you know. So we have this strategic reserve center. So I knew that stuff like that went in there, you know. Even, you know, you had, but I had no idea that we had massive numbers of ventilators and well, I don't know what else we had. Well, mask and whatever. I'm, I would, you know, I just didn't realize we had uh, that much stuff going in, you know, going in there. But this has been a clusterfuck situation, you know. The president didn't get with the program, and the, the president fired and removed the people that were in charge of the an entire, you know, the entire group in charge of, uh, you know. <laughs> and he didn't, it, you know, take it seriously, and and immediately do start moving stuff out of the strategic reserve and doing things that he should do and it's just, he just you know just messed it up major time and uh, so you know let's hope that we learn from this situation because we're going to have uh, you know more viruses and we're going to have we're going to have major you know weather uh, weather is changing climate change environmental problems we're going to have you know, if the water, you know, does rise, I'm 79, maybe I probably won't be around to see it. You know, when the water rises uh, and land disappears, you know, over in Bangladesh or India or Pakistan or... I don't think Pakistan has the ocean next to them. I don't know. Uh, anyway, you know, when millions and millions of people, they're, the water's coming, they, you know, they're going to move into other countries. That's going to cause, you know. Uh, so we we just need to be prepared, and then we we'll, we'll find out that uh, we'll think, you know, well, it doesn't matter about Bangladesh, you know. Who can? And then we'll find out. Uh, hell, you know, they they've been taking our trash or something, and now we're. It's stacked higher than the house because that's the place we were sent. You know, you know, I don't know what the uh, things will be, but just the things are going to be. We need we need to be prepared for it. One thing about the Mormon religion, you know, they part of their basic religion, I guess, is to have like a year's supply of stuff that they need. I I admire that. I admire that about them. That's a really good you know good idea. I have a feeling maybe that it was made to uh, so that dealers or somebody could uh, sell them a year's you know supply of stuff. I don't know. Um, I'm looking here. Okay, I had no idea that Chris Cromo. The TV, CNN guy was related to Governor Cuomo of New York State. But God help us, please. So Chris Cuomo now has D.D. the cat just walked in looking for food. Uh, Chris Cuomo has the virus, so he's at home. Now he's doing... D.D., you want food? I can't, I'm busy now. Bye-bye. 
Could you close the door as you go out? So I haven't watched, I just happened to flip, well, I don't have CNN, but I, I, he's reporting from home. Shit. It's like, you know how the weather people, when the hurricane comes, and in Florida, whatever, all the weather people go out and they stand there and the waves break and they're, you know, whatever. And, and uh, what's other examples of, you know. So, um, so now he's reporting, you know. I'm reporting, you know, and oh, this is, you know. And, and it's like, in a first-hand report, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sick, but I'm, I'm, I'm giving you the, uh, you're fucking sick it's not like you're one of these reporters who is not going to the station, but you're doing your whatever. But, you know, he's reporting for, like he's at a combat, you know. He said, like he's in Iraq or Iran or someplace, you know, reporting from the scene, you know, and bullets are, you know. He has the virus. He's at home. Fucking go to bed and take Tylenol. Don't fucking be putting your face on. So we don't care. Shit. So, uh, maybe I should change the name instead of this being Show Me Blog or Howard's Notebook or whatever I call these videos. Maybe it should be the Angry Old Man, except there was a guy, an old man, who made YouTube videos. That he passed away years ago, but that was his thing. And I think that was even his name or whatever, so... I can't do that, but I think he might have been putting on. He was an old man, but I think he might have been putting on and his, I think, you know, grown son or whatever. I'm not putting on. Uh, uh, let's see. Last rounds of protective gear in the national stockpile being shipped. I saw where we have ordered in ventilators from Russia and we're ordering in other stuff from China and I don't know about from Russia I guess they can probably change the panel on those you know or maybe the manufacturers when they manufacture them maybe they have you know depending on where they're sh selling them to they just put a panel on there it's gonna be kind of bad if especially with their what do they call that cryptic or not crypt you know the I tried to learn Russian back when I was a teenager doing shortwave listening or whatever. Radio Moscow broadcast uh, lessons in Russian or whatever, and I uh, subscribed to uh, Russia Today or something. I wasn't Russia Today, but a, a magazine. I subscribed to the magazine. It came in Russia. I also subscribed to an electronic, like popular electronics, except more technical, and I got... I got that, and I bought a dictionary, and I should not have picked, tried to pick Russian, <laughs> because, you know, they use, what do they call the, you know, the letters, they're not like, what's wrong with those people, you know, not like our alphabet, that made it even like, that's a, you know, I tried for a while, but with my hearing loss that I have, I'm lucky I can speak English, because... Uh, so learning languages are, was not I tried Spanish too uh, and I tried I think I, I think what I had uh, was it 33 RPM or I think it might have been 78 RPM records then it was like 33 RPM records I bought to learn Spanish then finally I got it on tape and then I tried various things and I just you know, I mean, I learned a little bit, but not enough. My grandfather, and he died in like 1941, and uh, he was, I don't know how, why, uh, he, well, he owned a, a trunk and suitcase making business. And uh, he spoke Spanish, and then when his, his uh, 
so I guess it must have been World War One, or was it World War Two? And I'm sure he wasn't the only one, but he showed the government. No, it must have been World War One. He showed the government how to make footlockers and things like that. I'm sure there were other, you know, craftsmen, you know, who did the same for the government. And then the then after the war, manufacturing plants they didn't have somebody a craftsman, you know, building a making your suitcase for you it was machines and so I so at, at, at that point or at some point I'm not sure exactly but he was he belonged to uh, a Spanish society or whatever of and he translated for businesses that this is before the world went you know before the internet and he translated uh, stuff or whatever so that was my grandfather who you know that was James Joseph Howard Sr. My father was James Joseph Howard Jr. And I was James Joseph Howard III. And, but I didn't follow after my grandfather. That's, and my father didn't either, you know. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, the doctor, was it Fossey or whatever it is? The, the doctor that's been standing, well, there's been two doctors I think mainly with I haven't I can't stand to watch it, but Trump's two-hour coronavirus uh, show. He has these two doctors, and one's a female, and the uh, and this other doctor, the male. Anyway, the other doctor uh, is getting death threats, of course, from right-wing Trump supporters. That think this is all just a uh, so they now have to provide this doctor with security around the clock security uh, uh, let's see I didn't check this one out engineer accused of crashing a train said he was suspicious of nearby corona virus relief ship. Okay, I got a clip. I, I, I shouldn't click on this. Engineer accused of crashing a train said he was suspicious of nearby corona's relief ship. A train engineer faces federal charges. Maybe I'll okay, just let this run and I'll turn off the, the speaker. A train engineer faces federal charges after he allegedly admitted to him intentionally derailing a train Tuesday near the United States Mercy, United, Na United States Naval Ship Mercy, a ship sent to Los Angeles to ease the burden of hospitals treating coronavirus, according to the Department of Justice. Uh, this engineer told law enforcement investigators he was suspicious of the ship and believed it had an alternative purpose related to the Corona-19 or a government takeover. Uh, in a way, it's uh, this is a lot of stress for a lot of people. I mean, not a lot of stress me. I, I'm not, I think <laughs> I haven't been going out for a long time anyway. I mean, I'm walking around the parking lot now. But, but I mean, for a lot of people, you know, it's going to be. And if you have some problems, which a lot of people do, and I forget the statistics, but the, the number is high worldwide of how many people have, you know, a mental, emotional, uh, whatever you want, you know, to call them. It's quite high, you know. And the United States, I don't know about other countries, but the United States doesn't spend the kind of money that it should and make resources available to those kinds of, you know, people. Well, you, you know that because those kinds of people, my glass keeps sweating onto my desk here. Um, then it, you know, the United States government just does not, that's why there's all these homeless people. Uh, I think most Americans, you know, 
Republic, well, liberal, conservatives, you know, they think uh, those those people that are begging, those people that are living on the street with their, you know, wives and children or whatever, they're just uh, trying to make money. They're just asking for money. Uh, that's their, they, they're probably driving a Cadillac or whatever. No. Most of those people are, uh, you know, have schizophrenia or are manic depressive or bipolar or they're, uh, you know, addicted to drugs or alcohol or they're veterans with post-traumatic stress disorder or on and on and on and on. And we, the United States government just doesn't take care, you know. And those, a lot of those people get locked up for some reason. Well, because, you know, they have the no telling what they're going to do, you know. And they get locked up in the last place in the world that they should be is, you know, in a prison. Uh, you know, they need help. But uh, anyway, the Democratic National Convention is is pushed back. It's going to be in August. I hope this everything is over with by... August or before, um, let's see what else we can uh, pull up here. Apparently, um, Canada's outlandish hair freezing contest, contest offers much needed laughs. I've heard of a lot of people using Xantex. Um, says on this box there, prevents heartburn. Uh, I think, I think it, when I worked at a hospital around the 1970s or whatever, I think I ended up arresting a guy, and I think that's what he re He went into the nursing station back behind it and grabbed a handful of stuff, and I think it was Xantex. Um, anyway, I ended up arresting him or whatever. And a Kansas City, Missouri police detective had... Anyway, I, I was working at the hospital. It was a weekend, Saturday. No, Sunday. Because Saturday, three guys, surgery was supposed to be closed, but they were doing emergency surgery, but there was just you know, the doctor, the anesthesiologist, and maybe a couple nurses or whatever. They were back in the operating room, but surgery was unlocked. And these three guys were came in and were wandering around the hospital, and they went in there and they saw a cart, and they grabbed some stuff and took off running down the hill. They were about a block away from me. When, you know, I uh, saw them come running out of the hospital. I knew they had done something. and uh, Anyway... Uh, so I ended up arresting them. They were about a block away. You're wondering, well, how did, you know, and I was loaded down with walkie-talkie, radio, handcuffs, revolver, extra ammunition, everything else. But, you know, I was like, hey, can I help? No. You know, I said, uh, what, what, you know, did you need something? No. And I said, Come here. I want to talk to you. And then they came up and I arrested them, you know. Um, so the next day, I'm in the hospital. Sunday, I'm working. And uh, I'm going to turn the camera away because I'm not wearing any pants and shut this door because I can hear. I don't know about you, and I hear my ex-wife and the other one talking on the telephone. Uh. Okay. I'm back. Let me check to make sure what the video looks like here. It looks okay. Okay. So anyway, this was a Sunday, and I had just arrested three guys the day before. And so anyway, I'm in the hospital, and I get a call to uh, go up to the third floor. The nursing station wants to see me. So I go over, and I take the elevator up, 
and get off. And when I got off the elevator, there was a, a gentleman in a, a suit and everything. And he said, uh, are you security? And I said, yes. And he said, uh, I'm a narcotics, you know, showed me his ID. Narcotics uh, detective about that arrest that you made yesterday. I'd like to talk to you and everything. And I said, okay, well, I just need to go right over here. There was a waiting room. I said, why don't you wait for me and I'll just have to go check on something. He said, you want me to come with you? And I said, yeah, that's fine. Come with me. So we went over and the nurse, you know, said uh, there was this guy who reached in and grabbed, and I think she said Xanax, because there wasn't anything. It wasn't like she did, he didn't grab, you know, of course, narcotics are locked up, you know. Nurses have a key, but they're locked up. So, but, uh, and uh, she said, he grabbed it. She said, I asked him, I said, I, can I help you? And and he said, I, whatever he said, he was, I don't know. And uh, I said, well, which way did he go? And she said, oh, no, that's it, yeah. Uh, she said, can I help you? And, and he said, uh, I'm looking for the restroom. And she said, it's right there. And everything. And I said, so I said, uh, where is he now? She said, he's in the restroom. <laughs> so we went over, and uh, when he came out, uh, not only was I there, but there was a narcotics detective, and uh, he was arrested. Um, so maybe it wasn't Xanax. It seemed like it was. It was something. You know. um, by the way, I worked 30 years hospital security, and all nurses work hard. And, you know, ER nurses, I mean, all nurses work hard, but, and uh, I've done a lot, of, I've had a lot of jobs, I've done a lot of different things. Uh, uh, a lot of different jobs. I've met, I'm not going to go through them, don't get me started, because I've already mentioned some of them, you know, but I could not be a nurse. Uh, uh, the res you know, the response, and two, I just couldn't be one. Uh, you know, the, the uh, I went through EMT training. I probably shouldn't mention this. <laughs> I went through EMT training and got certified because I, I was working at this small hospital. And man, it was they were in the emergency room. There was ER doctor who would sleep when he wasn't needed two nurses, and that was it. I mean, at, in the beginning, the x-ray tech at night had to be called in if needed. The respiratory therapy had to be called in if needed. There later was a lab. Well, the lab tech was, there was always a, one person in the lab on the graveyard shift or the midnight shift or the third shift or whatever it's called. And... Uh, I thought, I'm going to get, I went to the training for the EMT training. I took the EMT training, and I took my test and got certified. And as part of the EMT training, I had to go, you know, with uh, other students to a uh, auto place for junked cars. And we, you know, did the, uh, uh, cut up the vehicles and did things in order to, you know, anyway, so get the training and how to do that, how to use the jaws of life and just all this. And I did all that. I got certified. And I did it just so if something came up, I wanted to be able to help, you know, the ER nurses. And I helped a lot, but not that I needed the training. I, you know, like when they were really busy, I, I got people in wheelchairs and got, you know, ice pack to put on their leg or whatever it you know whatever I did some temperatures I did uh, and uh, after they did sutures on stuff or whatever of course gloved up and whatever and I got that stuff put it in the uh, hazmat area you know trash and I mean I just to help out and I helped out a lot sometimes though like uh, ER was really busy and there was a patient in the trauma room or whatever, and uh, the nurse, they had other stuff. Jim, would you, uh, 
get that patient's temperature and or uh, no blood pressure. I said okay, so I went in and you know cuffs cuff was already around you know and pressed the thing and it goes up and then I get the numbers or whatever. And then about, uh, I don't know how long later, 30 minutes or whatever, the nurse went in there to uh, get the blood pressure again, <laughs> you know, check the blood pressure. And she said, uh, Jim, you forgot to deflate the cuff, you know. I mean, it, the patient didn't die or anything from it, but, you know. And then there was... Uh, some other stuff like that. I mean, I would not have made a good nurse. I mean, I would have. I just didn't have it. Didn't have what it takes. He, those started to say women. There it was men too, you know. Uh, but yeah, I mean, all the nurses really. And so, okay, let's move on to. The New York Times, they charge, if you go to the New York Times web, somebody will send you a link to the New York Times, you know, and then you go there, oh, they send you a link, you click, you go there, and it shows a little bit, and then it pops up, do you want to sign up? And I think you're not going to see, you know, you click no or whatever, and it pops up, I, you know. but you can sign up for this free New York Times briefing, and... Uh, Uh, the unemployment numbers are <laughs> Trump was so happy Trump inherited great uh, unemployment you know I think it might have been 7% or 6% or something and he got it to like 5% or something And but he takes he makes it sound like you know so But during uh, Obama's, that's when, uh, during Obama, well, when Obama took over from, you know, uh, the, uh, when he was elected, the unemployment rate was high and he got it, you know, got it. He also got a, the deficit down to way, way, way down. And Trump, when Trump took over, the they he got a should should be a Republicans because they always talk about the one of the deficit down. They never get the deficit down. It always goes up because they give money to their cronies and big business and do all that kind of stuff. But uh, so uh, and when, anyway, when Trump took over, the deficit just went you know out of sight. But when. Uh, Trump took over, then also uh, Obama had got the rate down where everybody was really happy with it, but it went even lower, like I think 5% or something, like you know, 5%. When, uh, so, uh, but anyway, Trump tells a different story, so you can believe who you want to believe. It says here that these ventilators in the government stockpile are, stockpile are unusable after a maintenance contract lapsed last year so they have all these things you know I imagine they probably have them hooked into electricity to keep the battery charged up or whatever but a biomed contractor or whatever has to come in I guess and check these things in order to keep them certified and to because uh, you can't you know take the thing and then send it someplace and then have it uh, uh, as hospital security for 30 years. You know, we were bio, we were the uh, biomed uh, or the uh, biohazard responders at one hospital, and at other hospitals. You know, of course, what well, all the hospitals we were. Uh, I was fire marshal at a hospital, and I conducted the fire uh, fire drills and. Uh, Checked the equipment, you know. Well, everybody, I mean, each shift checked it, fire extinguisher, you know, whatever. But, uh, but, uh, 
Yeah. Social Security benefits will receive their 1,200. Oh, okay. So people who are like myself and my ex-wife who are on Social Security, we will automatically get our 1,200 relief check through without having to file a tax return or whatever. It's going to be interesting what happens after... You know, how is the economy going to, when this is all over? Oh. <clears throat> Eleven states do not have, I think they're probably almost all Republican states. Uh, <clears throat> Eleven states don't have any uh, mandated uh, stay at home, don't gather in groups or whatever. Uh and then you've got these churches. One of them is in Texas. I forget where the other one. The other one was someplace, and they actually, I was surprised, every Sunday, uh, this other guy has, uh, minister, has been having a service with about a 1,000 people and uh, saying, you know, God will protect us and... Uh, and the the government's been saying, uh, please, you know, don't have you know, your church service with a thousand people there. And he's been saying, I guess he hasn't been saying fuck you to the government, but he's been saying, no, God will protect us. And uh, they've been saying, he's been saying, uh, religious freedom, we can, you know. And they arrested him, charged him. Well, they can charge him with is a couple of misdemeanors or whatever. And they, of course, they arrested him, and there's a mug picture of himself. And he's got, and if you ask me, he's got this, I mean, if, if I were him in that situation, I would have looked like Father, uh, who was it, going my way, and uh, Bells of St. Mary's, you know. I would have looked like him, you know, and then people would see that picture. Oh, you know, mug shot, and they'd be like, oh, you know, Father Flanagan, or uh, is that the guy from, uh, anyway, it'd be, oh, Father Flanagan, uh, why would they arrest him, or whatever, but he's got, a, this guy's got a look on his face like, fuck you, deal with, you know, and so, but of course his, but then I saw where Florida, which I, has not, I don't think, put a, because uh, it's, a Republican, as a Republican governor, I don't think they put a thing in place. Maybe some minimal controls, but you see, you know, beaches, that's Clearwater, Florida there. And, and that's small, you know, small number, smaller number of people than they're having. And, uh, but anyway, a Florida governor uh, put in an exemption for churches can have, you know, you have a thousand people going to show up on Sunday? Fine. You have ten thousand people showing up for a special a religious event? Fine. So, here's a look at the stay at home across the United Includes in Nevada now. Okay, I think this shows, that's why I put this thing up here. Yeah, not this one, but there was something else that it showed. See which states and cities have told residents to stay at home. Okay, what? Oh, okay, I'm surprised. Well, statewide order, This. Uh, these, these nice colors here, these are the, uh, I can't believe it. Louisiana, those Cajuns are, uh, but of course we have <laughs> my state, you know, Texas. Texas and Oklahoma and Utah and Wyoming and Missouri and Alabama and South Carolina, they're not putting, uh, telling people to stay at home. I hate, Missouri is my home state. I, 
I sometimes say, I lived in Missouri my entire life, you know. No, I mean, then they'll say, well, no, I left in 2000, you know. Not your entire, but anyway. But I, I just refuse to because on my blog before, you know, before there was World Wide Web even and everything, I had uh, the quote, I come from a state that raises corn and cotton and cockleburs and Democrats and for all the eloquence neither convinces nor satisfies me. And I just, ref I love that and I just refuse to, you know, Missouri is Republican now. And uh, Oklahoma and Texas and Alabama and South Carolina and Wyoming and Utah. And I think that, uh, well, that Florida's manned up except you can still have as many people let's see oh this shows okay here's March 23rd there was only nine states that had issued the order and then March 26th which was just a few days ago there was only 21 states that had issued the orders and on March 30th, which is a couple of days ago, now 30 states have issued the order. But you can see, you know, see the stripy little staties here? So they just recently, you know, and they're going to pay for it. The rest of us will pay for it also because those people don't. Uh... Okay, let's go down to <clears throat> Florida. Well, no, I too much to read. Let's go down to Texas. Missouri, no, please. It looks like it's more like Missouri, that city, you know. Oh, anyway, I'll put the links to this if you want to check out this stuff yourself. I'll try to put the links. Sometimes when I upload these videos, um, I just upload it and then I go back later and put some of the links. But please use those links down below for the internet, for the uh, cell phone service. And that'll save you $15. And if you sign up, I'll get $15. If five of you sign up, When my time comes to renew, if five of you signed up for the service, I would uh, have free cell phone, no charge for my cell phone service for a year, and I'd have high speed, uh, high speed service. Uh, also, try to use the uh, makes the it would make the ex-wife really happy. Sign up for the. Walmart food thing, you'll get $10 off your first order or whatever, and uh, we'll get a $10 thing off our next order. And if you can use the uh, link to Amazon, uh, I'll make a little, you know, let me show you that. I've showed that to you before. Let me go to Amazon, go to Earnings, okay, uh, and I want to click on um, Earnings. Here you can see for the last 28 days or whatever, I have earned uh, twelve dollars and seventy-four cents. This over here, I have no idea who these people are. I mean, I don't know, but I can see what they've ordered. Somebody has purchased a Logitech C930E webcam, which is a good one. Logitech. Somebody purchased a novel. 
so somebody's at home with nothing to do but read. Read. Uh, and uh, I know who this, by the, this person is, by the way. I have a friend who's, uh, I, I recognize the ingredients that he's purchasing. Very good friend, been a friend for years and years. Basically my only friend, really, in a way. Um, somebody purchased AA 1.5 alkaline batteries. Uh, somebody purchased a coffee maker. And well, anyway, it might go to... Now, I have no idea. There's no way for me to tell who, you know. So if you need to order the pens or uh, condoms or whatever, I, I won't know. Uh, let's see. Payment history. Okay, here you go. I'm not even sure those items would actually show in that list. I should get a commission, I would think. But uh, So here you can see the red amount is the amount that uh, was paid out. So, you, you know, last month I made $14.21. Uh, the month before I made $40.90. That's good. And then a couple months before that, $26.00. And then a month before that, eighteen dollars. And then I think two or three months go by, and I, you know, so you can see, not getting rich, but if if you could, use that Amazon link, you know, Jim Howard dot me, put it, make a desktop icon, or put it on your browser, or, you know, or favorites or something. So. Um. I have some video from outdoors walking around. I may put that on or whatever. Um, what else is coming? Oh, on my cell phone, I played with Manicam and uh, their app. And if you remember when Windows, I was using the Windows Manicam. And I really liked it. It's a simple program, but worked really well for me. And uh, on the uh, cell phone, I walked around outside, and I turned the uh, camera into the... Well, let me bring it up here. Right, let me see what you can see So when I show it to you. Let's see, uh, Manicam would be in a camera thing. No. Uh, no. no. Manicam, okay. Okay, so that, let's see, you're getting some reflection. Okay, I'm not sure that's going to. That's Manicam running. But, and you can live stream too, by the way, with it. But I did make a video, but, so I, I turned the, it this way, you know, that's, but when my video was made, it was, what I have my hand in front of the, uh, when the, uh, the video was like this, and I thought, okay, I'll go into my, I'll go into the, I never had to deal with that before, but I went into the editor, went into two different ones, and I thought, well, all I needed to do is just, you know, like, rotate. I couldn't find where to do it. So I think I deleted the video. Um, I'm not sure why it didn't, you know. I think, though, what I did in the past, so this cell phone was going into, I'd be using it, you know, and then all of a sudden it would flip, you know, into the other mode, but I'd still be using it like this, you know. And uh, I think I went into a setting and said, don't ever, you know, go, you know, stay in this, you know, okay, I got to bring this back up to see what you're saying, you know. So I, uh, I I went and set a setting to never, ever, you know, switch. 
and maybe that's what's affecting that. So, uh, okay. Anyway, I'll have to check into that. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, uh, give a thumbs up, I guess. Or if you want to give a thumbs, you know. If you're, I talk some political shit, so uh, if you liked what I said, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. I don't care. Doesn't matter. Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe, and I hope you're able to get toilet paper. We're doing okay in that regard. But yeah. Thank you very much.